hello everyone welcome to today's video today i will discuss about ai and machine learning based engineering solutions my group works on different projects which are more on a high technology readiness level and we try to develop uh, different tools which can be used for real life problems so in this series of videos i will come with few of our recent projects which were done by our msc students and i'm gonna and this give you kind of an overview of what was done and how it was achieved and if you are more interested in those tools and this kind of research then please comment below and i will definitely come back with more details and also some tutorials if required also please like the video so that this video gets higher rank in, in youtube and google algorithms and it can reach to more audiences so thank you for that in advance so the first example I have brought today is prediction of microbiologically influenced corrosion in industry and in literature it's also called MIC. Before going into the detail of what MIC is, first let's see what is the general methodology of using any machine learning or deep learning or AI based solution in, in any problem which you will have at hand so you always start with data collection and see how much data is available and then you identify appropriate data which will be needed for that specific problem you first select a machine learning or deep learning algorithm and then you train and test the machine learning algorithm to see if it is able to predict the behavior which you really want to achieve so after training and testing you need to validate and verify the prediction so again you will have some additional data which you will use to verify and validate the tool which you are developing after training and testing of machine learning algorithm so that you will have a confidence in in your results and finally you once you are very much ready then you use it for real life application real life is not that easy where you can just go in a straight line as you can see here there are many ups and downs so one problem you come across is the amount of data uh, which could be limited depending on the specific problem at hand so you need to really carefully look at the data how much data is available especially for that specific problem and then if you look at the other side you where you are trying to test and train the machine learning or deep learning algorithm such machine learning and deep learning algorithms are data hungry so they require a huge amount of data so to solve this dilemma we work on different ways of sorting this data problem out and in that case what we can do we can do more experiments which might not be possible for many application areas or problems which you have and the other option is to use mechanistic models which are again calibrated through experimental data but they can give you a more sort of a me mechanistic overview of the problem and you can generate the more data using those these two techniques so we in this work also use the experimental data to develop a kind of a mechanistic model and then we use that mechanistic model to generate the data which was then used to train and test the machine learning algorithm again this is not really straightforward because you have to again do a light do it step by step in an iterative manner you you may generate the data and you then start doing training and testing of machine learning algorithm but then you find out that it's not working really well so you need it needs more data for example so you go back as you see on the screen here and you generate more data and then you keep on doing it until unless you find the final finally tested and trained and tested machine learning algorithm once you have done that and you are really happy that you have done everything right but then when you start to validate and verify the predictions for different types of challenging data sets and see if your model is which is already trained and tested can predict those behaviors then you find out no still it requires more data because we we miss some of the data which is more crucial for real life cases so in that case again you have to go back and repeat the same exercise so you can do more experiments or you can use mechanistic models which are already calibrated to generate more data and then once you are happy with all those things then you are really confident that everything has been tested 
and it's going to really work, then you can use it for real life application, which could be a client who, is, who will be using it or it could be yourself. So this is the overall methodology which we also adopt in different problems which we solve. And as you can see, it doesn't only require you to know the knowledge of the data collection, data analytics, and then machine learning, but you also need to know the mechanistic models and, and the physics of the problem which you are trying to solve. So it's a multidisciplinary area and that's what we try to do as a team in, in, on, in these kind of projects. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is you need to find out what data is needed, how much data is needed and where to get the data. Okay, let's look at now microbiologically influenced corrosion, MIC. And this corrosion is affected by the presence or activity of microorganisms. Again, microorganisms can be sulfate reducing bacteria, SRBs, iron oxidizing bacteria, sulfur oxidizing bacteria, iron reducing bacteria and so on. So there could be many different types of bacteria which can cause MIC. This is one of the examples where MIC of a high pressure separator horizontal baffle is shown and you can definitely see with the, with the use of this ruler you can see the dimensions of these pits which are formed and also how does the corrosion really looks like in that area. Another example here uh, if you can see this is another example of MIC of crude line to cargo storage and again it was having open 5% water cut. So again you can see a lot of pits and corrosion due to the corrosion and a lot of degradation is happening due to MIC. So you can now really realize that a lot of pitting happens due to this kind of corrosion although it can be uniform corrosion as well and these pits are more deadlier than uniform corrosion. So when you assess using API 579 or any other design or code or something like this, then you have to assess for those pit pits as well. So in this case, what we did, we used the support vector regression, which is a very simplified model along with other machine learning algorithms as well. And we were able to train this SVR algorithm. In this case, the data you see on the screen is based on four different uh, parameters or environmental factors which affect the pitting depth. So each blue dot is an experimental data or actual data while all the other colors is basically the predicted data from SVR algorithm. So the effect of different environmental factors on pitting depth were considered. The, the first one was the concentration of sulfate inside the pits, biofilm density and biofilm thickness and also the how much is the exposure time. So in this case, the results which are, which are on the screen right now are based on these factors that how they influence the pitting depth. So each dot has a certain value of this. And again, there were thousands of data points, but we have only shown you some of those which are after testing. And you can see uh, that there's a good overlap between the actual data and the predicted data of the pitting depth for different variables. So this way we were able to train support vector regression and we definitely were able to predict the MIC model using this. Again, if you are interested in more details of what sort of data was used, how, what experimental data we use and how much data was generated through different corrosion models which we have in, a, in my group. So you can again get back to me and I will be able to comment on that. So hopefully you will find it interesting. If you need more information on this, then please comment below. And please don't forget to like the video. Thank you very much and bye for now.